wonder drugs. The first person to glimpse bacteria was Antoine von Leeuwenhoek in 1683. Later, several times the bacteria were identified. Staphylococci bacteria cause staph infections. Streptococci bacteria causes strep throat. Pneumococci bacteria causes pneumonia. During the next two centuries, Joseph Lister fought infection by keeping bacteria out of the body. Edward Jenner, Louis Pasteur, and Robert Koch developed vaccinations to help the body's own defenses against invading bacteria. The body uses its white blood cells to fight invading bacteria. Usually, the white blood cells conquer the bacteria. Sometimes, however, the bacteria are too strong. They multiply in the body and overwhelm the white blood cells. As late as the 1930s, doctors still had no drug to fight many of the most common and most dangerous diseases. Antiseptics, applied externally, were still the most common way to deal with bacteria. The problem doctors faced is to kill the bacteria without harming human tissue. It's easy to find chemicals that kill germs, but they usually kill the patient, too. In fact, most antiseptics are better at killing the helpful white blood cells than at killing bacteria. A useful drug is one that destroys bacteria without having bad side effects upon the patient. This is the way things were until a German chemical company decided to plow some of its profits into medical research. In the early 1900s, the German chemical industry led the world in the production of artificial dyes. The most successful of these firms was IG Farben. The company made a variety of synthetic chemicals. The company built a well-equipped laboratory to test its chemicals for their medical properties. The company leaders thought that one or more of their many chemicals might combat disease. One of the doctors employed in the chemical laboratory was Gerhard Domach. He had been born in the little town of Lago, Germany in 1895. He showed a great interest in medicine and read all the medical books he could find. He intended to become a doctor. Just as he turned 18 years old and enrolled in medical school, World War I began. Medical school had to wait. Gerhard Domach's commanding officers made him a battlefield medic. Although self-taught, he knew far more than the average doctor. By the end of the war, he'd become an accomplished physician. After the war, he made it official by earning a medical degree. In 1927, the I.G. Farben Company had asked Dr. Domach to join their staff. At first, he hesitated. What could a doctor do in a chemical factory? He learned that he would still be saving lives. He would study new dyes, not for the use of coloring fabrics, but for possible uses in medicine. Chemists at the German dye company made a bright red compound which they patented under the name Prontosil. They made their dye from coal tar, a black sticky substance. In 1932, Domach infected mice with a deadly strain of staph bacteria. Then he injected Prontosil. To his great pleasure, the dye completely reversed the infection. Domoc put the dye to a very personal use. His own daughter's life was threatened by a serious infection. She'd pricked herself with a needle. Nothing the doctors tried helped. Her condition became more desperate as the bacteria causing the infection multiplied. Domach administered a massive injection of Prontosil to his daughter. Her condition improved dramatically. With that success behind him, Domach published a report of the drug's extraordinary powers in 1932. Only a part of the complex chemical of Prontosil actually destroyed bacteria. Only a part of the complex chemical of Prontosil actually destroyed bacteria. Chemists identified the active agent as sulfonylamide. It could be made much more quickly and easily than the dye itself. Sulfonylamide was the forerunner of a whole family of antiseptic sulfa drugs, which came from the chemical laboratory. Sulfa drugs have not been found in nature. They are strictly synthetic, made in the chemical laboratory. 
In the United States, Dr. Perrin H. Long at Johns Hopkins University became interested in the drug. In the summer of 1936, he attended a scientific meeting in London. There he learned of Frontacil and its role in fighting infection. Dr. Long immediately ordered samples of sulfa to experiment with once he returned to the United States. His experiments confirmed the wonderful properties of sulfa. Not only did it combat deadly infections, but it seldom brought on harmful side effects. In November of 1936, the White House called Johns Hopkins University Hospital. Franklin Roosevelt, Jr., the 22-year-old son of the president, had a very serious infection of the throat. His physician considers his condition serious, Mrs. Roosevelt explained. He's dying. Will the sulfa drug help? Dr. Long agreed to treat the president's son. He rushed to the bedside of the young man and began treatment with sulfa. The younger Roosevelt showed immediate improvement. He soon was out of danger. The successful treatment made headlines across the country and around the world. Seldom had a new discovery became so well known so quickly. Newspapers called sulfa a wonder drug. The wonder is that it killed one cell bacteria but did not hurt the cells of human tissue. In fact, sulfa drugs can be given in massive amounts without being toxic. During the fighting of World War II, medics freely sprinkled the drug in open wounds before they tied on bandages. The Nobel Prize Committee saw the importance of Domok's discovery. In 1939, they awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine to him. This was only seven years after his announcement, which is very fast action indeed for the Nobel Prize Committee. At first, Dr. Domak wrote a letter accepting the prize. The committee was puzzled by a second letter that he wrote a few weeks later. In the second letter, he coldly turned down the award. Later, the truth came out. In that same year, the Nobel Committee awarded the Peace Prize to another German, Karl von Ossietzky. This man opposed Hitler and had been thrown into a Nazi concentration camp for all his trouble. Hitler kept Karl von Ossietzky from accepting the Peace Prize. In anger, Hitler also ordered Dr. Domok to turn down his Nobel Award in Medicine. Gerhard Domok refused. The Gestapo arrested him and jailed him for a week. They dictated the second letter in which he refused the Nobel Prize. A gold medal and a large cash award accompanied the prize. Dr. Domok never received the money, which was turned back to the Nobel Committee. In 1947, after World War II and the death of Hitler, Dr. Domok visited Stockholm. He delivered his lecture and received his gold medal. How does sulfa kill bacteria? Usually, it's difficult to learn exactly how a drug works. In the case of sulfa, however, the reason is easily understood. The action is due to a case of mistaken identity. Some disease bacteria need a certain acid to grow and multiply. Bacteria take this acid from human blood. The acid and sulfa are very much alike. Bacteria can't tell the two compounds apart. Instead of taking the acid from the blood, they accepted sulfa, and they made it part of their body. But without the acid, the bacteria die. The infection clears up. Sulfa does not fool all types of bacteria, so it is not a universal cure-all. Sulfa did enjoy a time of immense importance until shortly after World War II. Then, even better antibiotics replaced it. Sulfa was the first wonder drug.